lot of different things going on uh, all over the world. Uh, we've been talking mainly the Middle East today because that's what we do uh, a lot here on Wednesdays. Um, what do you think of this situation with Iran and uh, Obama and everybody uh, playing nice and trying to negotiate on, on nuclear weapons? Well, I, I'll tell you, it's the, the entire crux of the issue with Iran and their nuclear weapons program for Iran comes down to one thing only, and, and that is Iran now requires only one ingredient to complete their weapons program, and that, that ingredient is time. Yeah. So any, any maneuver, any negotiation, any staging of a negotiation that uh, you know, represents the equivalent of a, any amount of time for them is it, good. So, you know, the Iranians know very well. They're, they're actually much better at this, and much more skilled uh, and deceptive negotiators than, than we are. Um, you combine us with a, a laundry list of European and other allies uh, to throw confusion and, and other levels of approval into the negotiation mix, and it's a dream come true for the Iranians. Yeah. Because they, they understand that if, they, if the Supreme Leader... Uh, makes a facial expression that people interpret as a positive look on his face, uh, then they just bought <laughs> themselves six more weeks of time. Because, you know, or, or the new president. Oh, Rouhani, is, he looked happy today. That must be good. Let's, let's analyze that expression on his face for two weeks. Um, <laughs> while the Iranians bring another thing. It's great. See, that's... Uh, if, you're an Iranian, if you're an Iranian you, you know, negotiator in this process, you are... Uh, utterly convinced that uh, that you're dealing with the biggest bunch of morons on the planet. Wow, uh, you are you are spot on on that. We've got uh, Frank Cuco joining us today. Each and every Wednesday, he joins us around this time to discuss the issues of the day. And um, uh, Frank, uh, uh, some of the other things that are going on is this uh, Syria situation. What, what do you think is, uh, are we finally going to have the, the, the big throwdown with Syria, or, or what's going on here? Well, I don't, I don't think, um, you know, I, I just don't think that there, from our side, uh, that there is the you know, position or the, you know, the national will to get involved in another large-scale, um, you know, particularly ground operation or, or any operation that would pull yeah. us into you know, into a situation like that in the Middle East. And, again, you know, this is another, you know, a, another situation where by, you know, sort of loosely connected, the, the Iranians are very heavily involved in Syria. I only make that connection because we were, we were talking about Iran before. Yeah. You know, but um, to, to the entrenched powers, I mean, success is everything in Syria. You've got a very small and obscure... Uh, Shia sect, actually the, the Alawite sect, which rules Syria, has been given, you know, over the last 40 years or so, increasing degrees of legitimacy by the, the larger Shia community, na namely the, the 12 or Shia community in Iran and in Lebanon, um, and they're invested. So, so the, the Syrians, the, the Assad's part of the uh, bargain was, hey, listen, you grant us legitimacy as a legitimate sect of Shia Islam, that is the Alawites, and our part of the bargain to you is we will open the back and front door for you to have access to the, the remainder of, um, you know, the, the Levant and, and other Middle Eastern countries and, and North Africa. So wow. um, the Iranians are not about to lose that, and the, as far as the Russians are concerned, and, and from a voting standpoint, the Chinese, we should be accustomed by now to understanding that neither the Russians nor the Chinese are ever going to do anything in the international court of opinion or U.N. voting uh, territory that is going to do the United States any favor. It's Frank Wuko. He joins us today here on uh, Wednesday. And uh, let, let's, let's talk about the Olympics. I know uh, in our last, uh, our last hour we talked with Dr. Jack Caravelli about the fact that the Olympics are supposed to be a time when you suspend all disbelief of all the news and all the craziness and you just enjoy sporting events. 
And I recently saw on the Drudge Report and a few other sites that they're, the U.S. is planning all sorts of escape plans just in case things go wrong and we've got to rescue the Olympians. Uh, this is just such a crazy mess. Uh, how, can, how can anybody make sense of this? Well, I, you know, I, I think as long as uh, my, my proposal is that we make, uh, we make these escape plans and, and execution of escape plans, it, we get them cleared by the IOC and just make them Olympic events. Really? <laughs> so in, in the event, you know, and, and then they, we can actually just practice it. I mean, obviously we don't want anything seriously wrong to, you know, to happen, but, you know, I mean, you can get, uh, you can get a gold, silver, or bronze, uh, you know, scored on your method of escape. Well? Get some you know, cross-country skiing, get a little downhill slalom in there, you know, um, and, uh, and away we go. It, this, is, this is crazy, and it shows the complete and total lack of this is I mean this is purest Islamic order um, yeah. you know at, at really at its finest I mean this is these women these black widows and the other Chechen rebels who have been involved in this in this war the separatist war against Russia these are people who are fully committed and, and while the rest of us and the Russians and, and sprinklings of you know, moderate Muslims around the world decry what the Black Widows are doing and and what the the Chechen separatist community is doing to to introduce a, a an atmosphere of terror um, in the Winter Olympics. They, you know, according to their worldview, which is the only one that counts, if you're them, yeah. uh, they're doing absolutely the um, the just and right thing. I just I, I I just can't wrap my head around all this craziness. <laughs> I just well, it's it, it's it's it is it is insane. I mean, I, I would say um, for the most part, the you know the, the Russians, you know, are when they want to lock something down and, and they want to institute, um, you know. Some fairly credible security measures in cooperation with other countries that are very, very good at it, like the United States, Great Britain, France. Yeah. Um, you know the, you know the the odds of, of something bad happening at the hand of these these black widows and the Chechens um, become significantly reduced. But uh, but still, it, it does. It just kind of it just floats in a big dark cloud over the uh, you know over the games that nobody wants to think about. Frank Wuko joins us today, as he does each and every Wednesday. And uh, as we wrap it up here, uh, what, what do you what do you make of the uh, some of the big news coming up this week? What what are your here what are what are some of your sources telling you? And what are some big stories we need to be on the lookout for? Well, you know, I would say a story that needs to remain a big story, as you know, as difficult as this is. Uh, I mean, for for people, and I would just say people in general um, that listen to your program and and others and and not, I'm not just not even from the conservative side of things but just concerned American citizens um, Benghazi needs to be shaken down I mean this, this is a it, it remains in my opinion and, and has been since it happened um, without a doubt one of the most significant Scandals in the the history of the executive office of the, the presidency and, and of the United States government, and to, to let it, you know, to let it die on the vine, you know, the way it is, despite the repeated revelations that come out from almost from week to week to week, is um, it's it's really it's kind of a national shame in a way. It's it's a very sad story that the American public is so disinterested. Um, you know, at will, and it's, it's also kind of a, a warning call uh, as to how overabsorbed we've all become with, uh, with you know, very trivial information on, on mass media. Frank Wuko joins us, and uh, Frank, how do we get more information? How can we uh, follow up and uh, check out everything you're doing online? Well, I tell you what, one of the best things to do is, um, is you know, spread the word and tell people to listen to your segment every Wednesday. 
um, you know, like I say, I'm, I am uh, getting involved in a lot of different different things right now, which which it kind of puts a little bit of a damper on my my ability to um, you know to entertain myself and 